Hello everybody, my name is Mark Eskenazi of ME Corals and I want to take a few minutes today to talk about coral feeding and amino acid, how they play a role in that. And again, I want to state I'm, I'm not a scientist and I'm going to go over a lot of stuff that sometimes goes over my head, so I'm going to try to bring it down to layman's term. And there's a lot of gray area and hopefully this opens us up to a lot of discussion. So let's start with what do corals really feed on? You know, if you look at uh, some of the data that's out there in the wild, in natural seawater, in the corals, we know that phosphates and nitrates are very limited. They're usually uh, nitrates are below one, phosphates are below one, they're point below 0.01. So how do corals feed in such an environment that seems to be nutrient deprived or food deprived? The truth is, late at night on most corals, zooplankton rise up from the depths or the, from the sand and, the, and basically become dense populations of food for corals. With their polyps extended, they eat via their polyps. They can actually grab the food and provide themselves with nitrate and phosphate. And then hence, from that, liberate it through their matrix where they, the skin of the coral is, and they can in turn then feed some of that, along with calcium and magnesium and everything else, to the skeleton of the coral. So the coral has a relationship with the zoanthaline symbiotic relationship where this skin, if you've ever seen a coral peel off, you know that there's a skin on the coral, not just a polyp. Well, amongst this skin and the many layers that are there, you have polyps, which have the ability to feed amongst food, and you also have the skin, which has the ability to feed from the sun. Yes, your corals get energy from the sun and from your light, uh, but it's not the only thing they need to eat. They need to eat heterotrophically, that is, they need photosynthesis and they need food. Photosynthesis, or the sun, is only providing them with carbon. Carbon is very necessary for corals. They call it for respiration, and they call it junk food. I think Bonerman wrote an article where it was described as junk food, but it's still very necessary. Carbon, some of it is also attained from food. Phosphates in our tanks, yours and mine, are not limited. We all seem to have a phosphate issue. That is, phosphates are higher than natural seawater. Because of that, I don't think worrying about phosphates in your system is important, but nitrates is the key to our systems. And what do I mean? In our efforts to reduce nitrate and phosphates via the red field ratio, we're taking down 16 times more nitrates than phosphates. That is, the red field ratio says algaes, including dinoflagellate algaes, which are our corals, are going to need 16 nitrogens to one phosphorus or nitrate and phosphate. And that's the ratio of all the algaes in your tank. So as we work with, let's say our macroalgae, Chato, we're skimming 16 times more nitrate than phosphates. Hence, we end up in a situation where nitrates get close to zero and our corals begin to starve and cannot make, the, in essence, the aspartic acid and the glutomic acid what is part of this matrix around the coral. They need to get that and they can't get it just from photosynthesis. So what do we do, Mark? If I add a lot of food to my tank, I'm going to raise my phosphates up, and I don't want to do that. And the answer is, first, if you use quality food that does not have high phosphates, you won't have that problem. Live zooplankton would be the ultimate food for coral aquarius. The problem is it's very difficult to maintain, very difficult to feed. I've tried it. I've never seen better coral results than when I was doing that, but it's difficult. Uh, frozen is good if you can do that. Freeze-dried is fine, too. Uh, the point is we have to feed our corals, and we have to feed them nitrates, not phosphates, because phosphates, if they go too high, cause discoloration of certain corals. So here comes amino acids. Amino acids, this organic matrix that is around the coral, uh, is made up of predominantly amino acids, aspartic acid being the, the highest or the most concentrated of it. As a matter of fact, in a millipora, between aspartic and glutomic acid, I think we've got about 75% amino acids that are in this organic matrix of corals. Anyways, if we're able to just feed a high-quality amino acid, and the coral's doing a lot of research in that area, we're able to provide the nitrates the corals need without adding phosphates. We're able to, in essence, not pollute our system and give the coral something that is the easiest for them or the least energy for them to break down and provide it to their matrix. That matrix, in turn, provides that to the coral. Studies have shown now, many studies, that corals fed zooplankton grow faster than those not fed. Studies have shown that if fed amino acids, high in aspartic and glutomic acid, 
that corals grow faster than unfed corals. Uh, obviously, I have seen the results in my tank uh, with the ME coral amino acids. I have given the product out to many people. It's been used widely all over the place. The key is corals need to eat. They are ferocious eaters. The only way we can provide them food without increasing phosphates is through amino acids or possibly live phytoplankton. With that, I hope I've created enough controversy to create a little bit of discussion here. Let's talk some more, and we'll see you in our next video. You have a great day.